that's, um, let's see, Hussein, Roxy, Shane, and Valia. Yeah, what I said was saying, uh, and we just continue chatting. Um, uh, I, I sort of feel the presence, and especially when that, you know, when when they leave, I feel that they leave. It's completely like different. Uh, the uh, emotions come through. The personality comes through pretty well. I feel them, but um, somehow I, I, uh, yes, I uh, the information. Um, is um, how would you say it in a positive way? Um, it, it's not like Jim. It's uh, it's it's not like coming through Jim. It's it's different. Well, it's more like uh, uh, something which you can touch. I can't tell the difference when I'm making it up or they are saying it. I can't make it. So I'm I'm still still censoring what they say. So it's much me and a little bit of them. It's them uh, them flavored Max or Max flavored them. That sort of thing. Okay. So you're con your conscious channel then, yes? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going away. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I asked last time, I asked for invitations, there was a lot of invitations, but uh, usually it, uh, it's Grindel coming. And because it's not fully Grindel, it's well, Max Max flavored Grindel, so it's called Shim. But that would be like Max flavored Grindel. <clears throat> Have you met Grindel before? No. Ah. Okay. So you wouldn't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grindel comes through Jim quite quite often. Oh, uh, that's Grindel is the uh, reptilian, right? Yeah, this part yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah, the one that complains about sitting on a tail. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> he's, um, uh, I think, um, military high-ranking military from US. I think he is. I think he is still in that same sort of body. He didn't die. He just finished his service and kind of moved off to a ship and and just enjoys channeling from a ship. So he is. Um, <clears throat> he is very much from Earth. Most of his life, he was uh, in human. You know, he's like shape shifting to human and serving as a military. That's what I think. That's I think that's how the story goes. I think so. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. <clears throat> but if if you have any, yeah, how about you do your invites and topics, and maybe that would um, help me to. Help them. Any topics you have today? Yeah. Let me ask everyone. Um, Hussein, what's your topic of today? What's your word of today? Uh, I actually saw the invite quite late, so <laughs> not really sure. Maybe we can talk about the physics of channeling, I guess, because uh, when it first started for me, um, yeah, I told Roxy this already. I basically speak to to Aaron. He's my higher self. Mm -hmm. And initially, when it first came through, it came. I think he came when I really needed him, doing a very bad part of my life. And uh, basically, it came through quite energetically. And I kept asking, like, "Where are you from? What's your name? What's your name?" And he kept saying something like, "Doesn't matter." You know. Only much later did he actually tell me his name and where he was from. And that was actually when he actually told me his name and where he came from, and I researched it much later, there were massive coincidences. So I think initially, uh, not much information would come through, but much later on, it would be validated. Like um, his name, Aaron, E-R-O-N. I was like, what the hell is that? When I actually Googled it, it's actually a very old Hebrew name. And, and the, the name actually means Mountain of Strength. Say again? Mountain uh, Yeah, Mountain It's a very old Hebrew name. And uh, later I was told that he was a Pleiadian guy, which makes a lot of sense because I do resonate very much with the Pleiadians. Then much later I did ask him where he was from. I asked him for a long time. I was kept asking him, where are you from? Where are you from? But he never said anything. He said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But much later, he actually said Taigeta. 
And if I'm not mistaken, in Hyukolo, Era is in Taigeta, the star, isn't it? Yeah. So I was like, whoa! And that was before I found Hyukolo. Well before I found Hyukolo. It was in 20... I joined Hyukolo late 2014, I think. And Aaron told me about uh, Taigeta in 2013. Or 20, early 2014, yeah. So those are massive coincidences. So I was quite happy because it's just like sort of validation. So I was quite happy about that. Let me so double I, check. So you got the information that Era is from Taigeta before I, reading it anyway. Is it right? Uh, it was much well before I turned to Kolo. Oh, it that's was, a nice, nice confirmation. That's a, you know, yeah, so I was quite happy. I was like, what? I was like, Excellent. So I was quite happy about that. So I think the information comes much later. At the beginning, it's just advice and, you know. But I find that when I did talk to him, it's, and a lot of downloads came, It would I would not remember the conversation after I came out of the channeling. But it does help anyway. So I asked him about this and he, he told me that, um, he says it doesn't matter because it was already planted. And when the information was needed, it would come. Bingo. Something like that. So it's pretty cool, actually. Like Inception, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Oh. Okay, I think I'm done with my side. <laughs> Roxy? What's that? No, I think I'm done with my side. That's pretty much my story. Oh, yeah. No, and I, I, I like how... Um, you know, the thing is, is from my perspective, looking at your whole story there, the idea is to build trust first. Yeah. Because... There's a there's a point of validation that we discount as as coincidence as yeah. in human nature. You know, and I'm not talking about nature as in what you are, eternal love. I'm talking about the belief systems of a human perspective, coveting idea, human nature. We are taught to chalk things up to coincidence in that kind yeah. of idea. And you got all this information, you were talking with them but no validation was there. But you trusted, that's the key, you trusted the information, you went forward with it. And that gain of trust allowed you to, let's say, shift into the validation idea where then, after the validation came, be, while the trust was in place, that's how the, it became epic for you. That's the validation now. There was no doubt. Synchronicity was in play, not coincidence. So I, it's beautiful. Make sense? Yeah. Also, I think um, amethysts really helped a lot, actually. Really did. I have uh, a few amethysts, and the one I sleep beside my bed is like a really big one, pyramid shape. But it's very it's a very rough cut rock and it's the size of a fist. Mm. So I think that did help a lot. Like you said, it, it is basically a permission slip, but maybe in three D it does amplify. So I find that it really helps having it beside where I sleep. Right. So we have some new people, Max. Um, Max asked a question. Why don't you ask a question to the new people that joined in and maybe they want want a subject that you can channel on? Akari, hello. Shin, oh, the dude in space. Dudes. Muted. Uh huh. Uh, good morning, everybody. Last... Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes, hi. Hi. Is hey. that the, the dust? The dust. Yes, what's your topic of today? What brings you here? What, what excites you today? Um, you're channeling, right? Yeah. Okay, can you... <laughs> okay, wait. That was can beautiful, you... Max. Yeah, can you explain this channeling deal to me? Oh, yes, wonderful. Uh, I would yes, love wonderful. to hear it. Roxy, Roxy, how about you go? Oh, come on, you got this. No, no, I just wanted to give you some pleasure. Oh, oh. you're so sweet. So, uh, Dust, you are, are you familiar with channeling at all? Or No, I mean, I've seen people do it online, but I've never actually seen it done before. Okay. So the idea of channeling is to connect vibrationally 
because as the great Nikola Tesla, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think of the universe as energy vibration. frequency and vibration, exactly. So when you are vibrating at a certain frequency within that frequency band, you relate. And what I mean by relating is you understand where you are. We are vibrating. We relate to the frequency of that of physicality so we can relate to it. But within that, all vibrations have access to other vibrations and connections. These other vibrations, in this idea of channeling, we're focusing in on this, are mm -hmm. other ideas of ourselves, which we call entities or individual perspectives. We tune into them, we trust, we allow them to speak through us through either trance or untran or not. <clears throat> Trans channeling or conscious channeling, either one, and uh, we bring forth ideas from them, which is truly us. Yes, we're tuning into a radio station, if you will, and allowing that program to be spoken through the idea of our representation of humanity, that kind of idea. So we channel information or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be information. It can just be anything, truly. But we are connecting to a different frequency of ourselves and bringing that forth and offering to the collective. Does that make sense? All right. Well, let's get to channeling. <laughs> <laughs> let's do this. <clears throat> so, uh, Maria, uh, we just kind of kind of collect uh, ideas. Um, yeah, that's what's your – so you brought – your main interest of today is what's channeling, right? Oh, well, if I would like to know something about the universe, I would like to know um, the origin of consciousness. Can you channel anything about that? Origin of consciousness. We'll see what comes up. Yeah, I would love to hear. To, uh, put my judgment on that. Yeah. Uh, Valia, what's your what's your interest of today? Oh. Uh... Well, actually, I have uh, several questions. Uh, uh, I want to know uh, about uh, uh, what uh, alien consciousness I have uh, near to me now, for example. I see. Uh, anyone else has any any other uh, topics to bring? I think that's a very interesting question that uh, that Ghostbuster there, the dust, offered. Mm. I mean, I think we can start with that one, and then after that, then we can see whoever, whoever else wants to join in. We have Sean here as well, and uh, the dudes. Hello, so, much love. Much love to you, Sean. Uh, many blessings. Many blessings to you, my friend. <clears throat> So I think yeah we can start with that and just rock and roll. Hi Holly. Sure, sure. Holly strong. Yeah, Holly. Hi, Holly. Holly, what's your um, topic of today? Holly. All right. Holly is muted. Do you want to say? Yeah. And right, I had that. a quick question. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> uh, just on the question of those who are about to break through into the channeling state, uh, um, when you're sitting in meditation, and I had a session with Jim, and they said all you need to do is just speak. But I didn't hear anything or I didn't perceive anything in the background, and I was just wondering how or what you hear. Or I'm just a little fuzzy on that little concept there. I know it's supposed to be a block form thought that comes through, but are you supposed to hear something before you speak or no? Great question. I don't hear anything. <laughs> Never. Uh, others do. Others do, but I don't. I still don't know if it's me speaking or them speaking, but I certainly feel the presence of energy, and I feel that my just energy changes, and um, it's I let them play with my uh, with me. It's invitation, all you know, conscious invitation. So I let them populate me and play with whatever is here. So they pick my brain and pick from the brain whatever they like or from whatever from etheric body whatever they like and bring it up. 
and I'm kind of let them play with that. But I don't hear anything. But uh, I, I, all, I have always been sort of intuitive. So especially in problem solving, problem solving is my my um, favorite part. So I just kind of connect to higher whatever higher, higher source and uh, and answer comes. That's that's my my um, way. But I certainly know that others have clear voices. Yes, hello. Who is that? <laughs> oh, it was electronic. Yeah, he metered himself. <clears throat> oh, okay. All right. My child was screaming. Please excuse me. It's okay. Your child is love. We're all excited. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. So it was a real, a real, a real child. Uh. <laughs> all right. I, I love children, especially small ones. Especially. All right. I uh, will keep do breathing for a while, and then a um, couple of minutes maybe, or whatever. And then uh, we'll see what, what comes through. Oh, yeah. Usually it's Grindel coming. <clears throat> but, you know, if anybody else... Good people, good spirits come through. I, I welcome anybody. Yeah, hi there. Yeah, good here. Yeah. Hello, Shane. Uh, uh, yeah, your questions are not for me. Yeah, all of them are it's sort of, yeah, sort of tougher than I can handle. <coughs> Origins of consciousness. Yeah, consciousness. I don't know. I uh, the story goes that the conscience consciousness is first and it's primary. Everything else is secondary. So what can be the origin of an origin? It's like nonsense. Origin of an origin is an origin. That's the answer. First there was an idea. You know, as a the Bible says, your Bible says, first there was an idea. So consciousness was first. The word, the consciousness, was first. And then it created everything else. So that's, uh, that is nothing to answer here. First there was a simple idea. Ah, yeah, someone said, first there was a lie. That's a sort of kind of a negative take on it, but it has a sparkle of truth in it. First, there was a confusion. The first idea was from the hole there came a impulse, impulse, and then that impulse started a big confusion. How about that? Uh, in and the yang separating black and white, good and evil, all of that. Male and female came later, but first it is a separation. And it is conscious idea. How about you play? And to play, let's divide into two teams. One will be wearing uh, white t-shirts, and the other one will wear black t-shirts and, uh, and uh, play. So to play, we have to separate. That's it. Any questions here?
Hey there, any, am I talking to, am I muted? No, we can hear you. All right. Uh, yeah, can you make it, do you want it more sophisticated? I can bubble more. Just speak uh, what you want to speak. I, nah, you speak and I help you. Okay, I'm uh, here to uh, enjoy promoting Ascension and solving your um, kind of down on earth problem, sort of that sort of thing. Bring me uh, the topics which remind me, maybe I can help you. Yeah, value um, energies. Okay, so I do that have a question. Is not, yes? Uh, are you uh, an aspect of Jim? Oh, James Charles. That question was asked after you Perfect left question. last time. Am I an aspect of James Charles? I could be. Of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, I feel here a big mystery. What is... Uh, yeah, the aspect of James, the aspect of Max, and Grindel. Ah. Yeah, James flavored Grindel is different than Max flavored Grindel. But there is something nice and common here. Yeah, there is mystery to be solved. Uh, that's, I guess the question is the answer by itself. I cannot add much more, but yes, there is something here. And I am an aspect of each of you. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here or you wouldn't be here. And I would say I'm a nice aspect of you. But the strong one. Ah. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, Valia. Let, let me meditate on Valia. I uh, don't have direct connection, only through Max. So it's Max's guess is as good as uh, nothing. But let me just bring some randomnessity here. Randomness. Yeah. Uh, what uh, part, what continent I located on? Me? Valia. Uh, uh, I'm uh, in Novosibirsk in Russia. Ah. You see there, there is a, a different set of permissions. It's uh, all defined by what your sort of I wouldn't want to say the how yeah, powers have certain agreements with certain higher dim dimensional powers and allowed certain beings to come through. And here in America, it's a different agreement. So whatever comes here doesn't have to come there. Another way, but they could sneak in. Um, what is your feeling? What's your experience? Uh, I don't have a clear uh, experience and uh, dis uh, description about it. Uh, but uh, yesterday I felt some, some, somebody near to me. <laughs> I felt. Mm. And I thought maybe it was something uh, uh, high vibration, vibration <laughs> consciousness. Yeah, Roxy, do you have an answer? Um, no, I'm just um, no, I'm I'm fascinated. Keep it up, I'm good. <laughs> anybody, okay. We have so many channelers and psychics here. Anybody can help Maria. <laughs> it's okay. I, I I feel the same. It's uh, it, uh, I don't know how to say. <laughs> I I think it's a uh, true case. Ah. <laughs> uh. 
You see, the nature of reality is such that you and I can make it first, make it up first, and then it would manifest. That is hard to grasp concept, but that's the consciousness making the reality. I would guess, just my best guess, and always when you deal with things like that, Imagine the absolutely most exciting possibility ever and enjoy just a dream and hopefully to manifest. So I would say because you joined uh, Max and me and Jim and stuff and other nice people, they're all excited about hybrid children. So my best ever guess would be that it was a soul exploring the possibility of you producing, just donating your maybe egg, not fertilized, or maybe fertilized with extraterrestrial mixed parents, maybe a, ch a soul was exploring the idea that you could be a mother of a hybrid child up there. <laughs> Just exploring, nothing happened. It's up to you if you want to like that idea or not, but that would be them. Just coming and checking you out. Thank you. <laughs> And the energy of that soul, uh, I would just explore the idea that that could be a yeah, yeah vibe. Not that the soul has pure alien vibe, but it, you know, just its past experiences, alignments could be a yeah idea. Sorry for being that vague. It's not my preference, but that's the paradigm, yeah. Hello, can I help anyone else with my vague advices? Thank you. Who is there? I don't want to open my uh, Max's eyes. Yeah, my friend Roxy, what's your challenges of today? Fine. Yeah. I'm still fascinated with the idea of the origin of consciousness. Because I'm sitting here speaking with Osiphius, and he's given me a layout of it. And yeah. it's quite fascinating. The origin has an origin. Ah. And that, that right there is, you know, to the 3D mind and, and human perspective is, is fascinating. So it's it's not so much a challenge now. It's just the awareness of it, and now it's just unfolding. So I'm enjoying that. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah. Your voice pushes me away somehow. <laughs> Try to come back. Yeah. Your vibe is like a different light. Yeah. Give me something grounded to hold on to. A piece of a steak or something. Something good to chew on. <laughs> yeah. Something cheesy. Casey, you have anything? I see you there. You have any questions, Casey? I spoke to Casey last night. It was fun. Oh, she's got a big smile. I think she's muted. She muted herself. And she was muted yesterday, too. <laughs> and she unmuted and started speaking in 
connection was not so good. It was a bit choppy, but it was fun. Hi, Casey. We discussed Edgar Casey. I don't know. I want to mute. Yeah, I hear the sound now. Yeah, sorry. I can hear you again. Yes. I realized I did some research on Edgar Casey actually last night after our discussion. And I was wondering if um, if any of my other lives or selves had any um, associations with the acoustic records like him and if I worked with them directly and in their instruction or creation. As before, that's all the way got, and as I said, imagine best possible so circumstance good. and enjoy the dream, and <clears throat> something good can come out of that. Just manifest, dream first, and then manifest. Are you exploring the healer idea? Are you doing any healing? Um, not currently, but um, I've been told by others um, that I have a strong affinity for that, and I should develop that skill. Yeah. Some people go to nursing, and that's not overly healthy, but that's one of the ways. What's Max that? knows nurses, male, female nurses. The trouble there is that to get living, you have to work night shifts. And when you work night shifts, it's a nightmare because the whole life becomes dysfunctional. But you then do your healing in many ways. But again, the system is prohibitive of true spiritual healing, or at least resistant to that. So you have to do a lot of nonsense, and paperwork, and electronic paperwork. Uh, becoming a healer like Reiki, Qigong, acupuncture, uh, Ayurvedic, herbalist. Does it excite you? It does, it does, especially um, herbalism and Reiki especially excite me. Ah. Meetup.com, have you explored? Meetup.com, have you checked out? Have I checked out what? It's uh, Meetup. M E E T U. No, I haven't checked that out. Uh, check it out. Search Reiki Share. Yeah. And you just discover that. Okay. discovered nearby there is a group of Reiki healers which yes. free meet together and put hands on each other. Just as an option, an option. The dogs and children you have around, do you? I used to have a dog. <laughs> yeah. Do you do Reiki on a dog? I tried um, two or three times. I tried to heal him because he was very sick at the time. Ah. Uh, yeah. You don't have to even touch, but just petting is enough. Just the energy goes. You invite the energy from a source and put your hands whatever wherever you like and just let it flow for a while. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Casey, yeah. Casey he wasn't doing the Reiki. Casey was just reading reading their 
Akashic Records and gave prescriptions to the best of the medicine of that time. And the fun thing was he was almost never mistaken. He was only given the name and the location, and the rest was he was a sleeping prophet, sleeping and speaking. Do you speak when you sleep? Yes, yes. <laughs> My sister's saying yes, I guess I do. <laughs> wow, it's unusual. Maybe just the name and uh, yeah. So for the Casey, the key there was the person who was guarding him, the Casey, while he was in sleep meditation. It was absolutely the key. It wasn't one person, it was a two person deal. Because you need not only the medium, you need someone nearby who writes it down. Okay. And it is as important. And you have to be sort of protected because you're vulnerable when you are in a dream meditation state. Maybe that's your clue. You have to be trusting that person. It has to be a reliable person. Maybe your sister is one. Great. Now someone has to ask right questions. So it's maybe up to your sister to grow to be able to ask right questions. <laughs> Max right. is good in asking right questions and he yeah. is so impatient here trying to ask questions instead of speaking. Yeah. He does. He is really good at that. Right. I want to help more. Any more challenges down uh, up there? <sighs> Someone go forward. I don't want silence on the recording. It becomes boring. I'm too serious. Have you got a good way to protect against uh, other people's energies? Like when you're in a big group, some people take up all that energy into the group, and sometimes it's not a positive uh, thing taking up loads of people's energy. Have you got any way to protect yourself from it? Uh, that's a great idea, which I grasp only 20% of it. Um, somehow you don't sound loud. I wish you increased your volume somehow. Can you repeat louder? Or anyone who heard, can you translate louder? How can you uh, protect yourself from when you are around a big group of people and you collect in all their energy because you're very sensitive. How do you collect? How do you protect from yourself from doing that? Absolutely fascinating question. Yeah, that's great one. I am happy. Max have tons of experience with that, so I can bubble about that. So Max is very vulnerable in group situations. And uh, he loves playing volleyball. You know the game, six people on one side, six on the other side, and the net. And if you are tall, you, are, you can uh, spike the ball down and uh, score the point. And there it is 12 energies fighting each other. Or sometimes they play three on three. It's even stronger. So he played volleyball with young people and he was able to pull their energies just with a wheel because he was older. He just grabbed them and they failed and he was starting because all energy was his. 
And then he played with older people who were like old wizards and lad wizard ladies. And he was sucked out. <laughs> and he could do anything because their energy was way stronger. Their hunger for energy was so strong he couldn't do much. So that is absolutely true. You know, that fear of public speaking is nothing because it's all simple energy mechanics. It's just etheric body energy, very low, sort of close to physicality flow, which you can, it's tangible. So when you come to the stage, that audience just sucks the energy from you. It's not the fear, it is you're not able to hold, not being able to hold your energy just gets sucked. You want to give them everything, but they suck it faster than you can give, so you will end up with nothing. You cannot even breathe. You, your knees are shaken. Shaking. Yeah, protect. Ah, it takes with practice. When you understand the mechanism, you you hold it. You don't want to give it all away. You say, I will give you only that much in a time. That's my intention. And with practice, you just can hold. It's like, imagine you have a bubble around you of your energy. And you just hold. Here is a little bit for you, here is a little more for you, but not everything at once, right? Because that's what is expected, that's a, an art of public speaking. Of course, some people are so rich in energy, they can give everything and they will still have plenty. But normally, medium, medium level people, they uh, have trouble with groups, especially older people. Ah, that's why sometimes their people work in groups like Beatles. Uh, John was low on energy. Ah, he was normal, but he was sort of uh, in a group setting. He was little low, so he had uh, Ringa as a great donor. I am Max is blanking on names. Paul and third fourth one was give me the name. It's a shame. Give me this fourth name. Paul, John, Ringa, and the one which went to India. George. John, thank you. The George, if you look at his face. He is also a donor, but he runs low often. That's why he died early. So two of them were donors, and two of them were sort of uh, speakers. And that was a perfect uh, astrological combination, perfect energy combination. That's They were best because they were so well balanced. They could produce the vibration for so high level, for so high, uh, long period of time without any errors. Nobody could do that at the moment. And it is all this exchange. When you give, when you are in a group set, and when you give, you also get. When you give, you also get. It's two-way exchange. So when you give, don't forget to take it back right away. If you receive with one hand and send it with another hand, or receive with your heart and send it with your throat chakra, that's a perfect balance. It flows through you without depletion. So you give, you take, you give to take. So it flows instead of just empty in the vessel. Yeah, it's an art of keeping your energy flowing in a group setting, especially with public speaking. 
Now, small talk is something Americans do a lot. They stand in a circle, or, you know, as we do in the military, we sit around the square rectangular uh, table, and each one speaks. And the idea is to say nothing, but to bring up a little bit of energy and then let other person to do the same. It's like playing ball in a circle. You kick it a little and then you pass it to others to play. And the idea is to have the group vibe, group vibe sort of going on. It's not a single one, it's the group sort of developing its own vibe. And you lie, you guys, when you come to your group chats, you do the same. A little bit, everyone is contributing a little bit and passing it over. So you kick the ball a couple times and pass it over. And you don't play it too long so others get bored or depleted or you are depleted. And you don't change the topic that much. You kind of throw a little bit of wood in the fire so the fire keeps going. That's ours. Max sucks in that. He understands, but still sucks. He wants all the fire, all the wood, all the plots. Yeah. He needs to learn. Yeah, your comments, anyone? Hey, are you still there? I'd just like to thank you very much for explaining that out. Yeah, it, it's it's practice. You just train your energy to be sort of shaped. It's vortices. It comes from pain. So much pain and you cannot endure. But by practicing and getting a little bit of pain in a time allows you to create these pain vortices which help you uh, guard your flows. So the flows have to be structured and they're based on pain vortices which become experience. Um, force yourself, prepare, do your homework. If you prepare and you do your homework then you can create that structure of energy flow and you don't have to work as hard when you do the speech. You do the work in advance. That sort of thing. It's just one of approach. Don't over sweet. Don't don't over sweat it. Don't over sweat it. Just do your homework, prepare, practice, do a little bit. Find the situations where you can comfortably do things. Before Max went to this bigger crowd, he did one by one, and that's easier. Having nice friends is absolutely essential, and they're here to help you. Yes, thanks. Yes, I think it does take a lot of courage, actually, to do that, to come out in the open. I can't do that, not now at least. Ah, it's, it's, uh, I hate to be so what's it, lame, but it's service to others. If you <laughs> yeah. feel that you are serving, and it's not your bravery, it's your understanding. When you understand, it's not bravery anymore. Absolutely no bravery, whatever, whatsoever. You just understand, it just becomes second nature, like boring, uh, you are used to that, it's going to work every day or doing your homework every day, that's it. When you do it hundreds of times, that's it, it's, you know, you, you just do it, it's your second nature, it's your choice, it's making choices.
And reptilian energy here is essential. You go forward being strong, being brave because you understand, because you did your homework, because you know what you want, because you decide. It's not fuzzy. It's a decision made check mark. Yeah, yeah, if you want a symbol for reptilian energy, it's a check mark. Check mark. Yeah. Whoa. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Anybody new here? I can speak a little more. Anyone? I like ladies, but yeah, whoever who wanted to say something. Sorry. Anyone questions? Any new people here? Dust? Are you still here, or are you bored to death? No, bored to dust. <laughs> we're just we're all listening, actually. <laughs> ah, yeah. Hi. It's nice to have a new food for thought. Yes. Hi, to pick your imagination. All right. Ah. Uh, maybe I'll just ask something. Maybe like being able to channel. Like Bashar says, anyone can do it, but to become full channels, channels like you, Jim, Roxy, for example, it's like, is it part of the soul contract, or can anyone do it with intent? <clears throat> A great question, yeah. Max is nah, not yet as good now as Jim and Bashar, but he's like he's like baby, like baby plant growing. He gets kicked out of that, and I get kicked out of being here. So we have fun together. Yeah. Okay. He didn't believe he could do that until he hears the voices, and he still doesn't hear the voices, but he said, that, isn't that funny? And he, you know, when you experience that, when you go forward and experience that, you have certain confirmations here and there. It's not... It's not... Ah, it's a choice, right? It's a choice. You don't get some... Some of channelers get so great, unbeatable confirmations that it's for them it's clear path. But for others, it is a challenge, a choice challenge. They they never get full confirmation. They have beats here, beats there, but never a full solid confirmation. So they have to do to do a leap of faith. And that's a challenge, that's a test. No, are you ready to do a leap of faith and put yourself out and see what happens? For Max, it was a surprise that I came. Yes. So he kind of got kicked out of that. A kick out. Now, your soul contract is pretty flexible. You actually are amending it all the time. It's not something fixed. It's like a blueprint, but if you want to change it, just apply for an amendment. Uh, they will review it and say yes or no. And usually if it is a good idea, they say yes. If it is a bad idea, they say no. If they undecided, say no. They never undecided. All right. So, um, channeler. I guess the question is bigger than the answer. If you ask, it means there is something there for you to explore. You don't have to be trans channel. You can play with the idea one way or another. Dancing is channeling. Martial arts is channeling for sure. Any, I would say, improvisation, any improv 
is channeling for sure. What improvs are you good in? I think maybe uh, if I could input just a bit for Max, for example, because Max came from a scientific background, didn't he? So it's like uh, this is a bit of Pleiadian wisdom. Uh, modern humans, modern day humans, we are taught to abuse our logical mind, basically. So it's almost zero spiritual, and everything is just like uh, third dimensional logic, logic, logic. So it doesn't really, how do I put it? Uh, it's not it's not balanced. It's one very one sided. So I think for Max, because he came from a scientific background, and he's probably been conditioned to only follow the logical. So maybe that was an obstacle. You know what I mean? In the beginning. Is it mm -hmm. still dust sticking? Yeah, that's basically it's just. I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Ah, Max is popping up answering your questions. I want to stay here a little more. Yeah. Now, uh, for him, it was he tried to do poetry in science, and scientists hate when someone who tries to do imaginative things in science. Yep. He is a poet as well as a scientist. He was using uh, some sort of his past life as uh, uh, Atlantean and yeah, yeah, ways of science with crystals and creative magic so he was doing that sort of science as well so it wasn't pure and he he excelled in science in part because of his intuitive abilities to solve problems so he was like a spiritually uh, uh, spiritually practicing experimental scientist. So it's hard to tell. The training, yeah, the training was sort of, uh, but he kind of slugged that kind of training. He was more uh, experimental. How about we experiment with this and see if the cells talk to each other through telepathy? And they do. Not that he was successful in his experiments, but they do. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're saying that your logic is on your way and you need to make peace between your yeah. spiritual understanding and the logic, right? And you feel it disconnected. Yes, I think we have to balance it, basically. But a lot of modern-day humans, we are taught to be very one-sided. That's where a lot of problems come. Like for mainstream scientists, it's like, oh, if it can't be measured, then it isn't there. Uh, it's like what David Icke talks about. It's like um, the Wi-Fi isn't there. You don't see the radio waves, but it's there, you know, because we're just decoding of our eyes. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, I uh, hear it's all, you already know everything. Yeah, you use whatever tools you have in hand and play with it. And are you a healer? Uh, I think all of us are healers, but not active, I guess. Just, yeah. At least, uh, Sarah, I just came in. Sarah, you want to ask questions or anything? Hello, Shim. How are you? I, uh, I'm now green, though. Uh, yeah, Shim I... is Max flavored green, though. It's not fully Grindel, but whatever comes. Yeah. So which one are you? Are you Grindel or Shim? Same thing, yeah. It just <laughs> I uh, you see, I don't come fully through Max. It's Max mixed with me. So that becomes something else. And he gave name Shim and that would be fine. I see. I see. It's another frequency of Grindel. Yeah, it's more uh, maximized, sort of, <laughs> uh, less humor, more boring, more of that intellectual nonsense. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> Very good. Nice to hear your laughter. Nice to hear your snake laugh. <laughs> Very good. What language is that, actually? It's mine's special. Say what? Hi, Man, Roxy. Nothing special. Nothing I, special. I, I just hopped back out. I hopped out to tell the people over in the astral thing. Someone started that uh, Max is channeling, and there's a whole bunch of people over here because they were wondering where everyone was. So, oh, anyways, yes. we're back in the game. Hi. Love ya. Love you. <laughs> Sim Max, whoever's there is still muted. Yeah, I'm back. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Very good, Max. Thank you so much for sharing, baby. Wonderful. Hey. Thanks for that. And uh, Max, maybe uh, maybe you could get some amethyst crystals because apparently they amplify this sort of stuff. So, uh, what do you call that? Telepathy and that. So I. Help quite a bit for me. The rough cut ones. Who is in charge of this hangout? Jack. Jack is joining in the reindeer games. Oh, oh I see. So Jack needs to be removed, right? <laughs> yes. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, yeah, much appreciation. Sure. sure. Fine. All right. Um, someone was speaking about crystals. I didn't understand. Oh yeah. Uh, like for me, uh, I found that for channeling and all that, speaking to your higher self and all that, amul rough cut amethysts are pretty good. And I got a one the size of a fist actually. The oh. first ones I got were much smaller. It's like I craved them <laughs> back then, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got really small ones. But then I found. Uh, I went to Turkey and I found a big one like the size Isn't of a beautiful jingles. <laughs> He's following you. <laughs> so I found a big rough cut the size of a fist and that one really helps where I, so I put it beside where I sleep actually. Mm -hmm. I think it helps pretty much I guess. Or maybe it's just like a permission slip like what Bashar says. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it is a permission slip but again guys uh, you know what whatever 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 works for you use and yes. then offer it and it'll work for some people and it won't work for others but it's always expansion. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah some permission slips are better than other permission slips so it's a bigger permission slip. Yeah. Hmm. Booyah. <clears throat> so who wants to do the final um, blessings if you like? Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do an Octarian one to bring in happy energy. Hey. Yes. Namaste. Namaste. Um, hang on, let me see who wants to come in. I mean, hang on, my, 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 whenever there's energy around, one of my dogs goes a little ballistic, <laughs> and he's, he's jumping up on me, going, hi, hi, let me play, let me play. <laughs> so funny.
And greetings to the collective. This is Osiphius. Greetings. Mm. And in our ending of this idea of transmission that we've all co-created in, let me offer the, this idea before we give our final blessing. The representation of Max is an expansion of his canvas of life. Remember this. It need not be successful, need not be failure, need not be an agenda, need not be a goal, achievement, another, let's say, golden earring to adorn your mask with. It is simply that of expansion of that individual conscience. And that individual conscience is doing what? Offering. So whatever you get out of all your interactions and all of your nows is for you to choose the simplicity of polarity. If it serves you, rock on. If not, give it a kiss and go about your nows. But if it shakes you in your core and figuring out how and when and why and such then you are only continuing your own limitations within the paradox of life. Free yourself and allow these offerings that Max and others have offered in their nows and see where your own canvas unfolds. Remember, this is just a gift of life. Make it nothing more than the simplicity of experience, for experience is only expansion leading to a higher you. You cannot ask for anything more, truly. And in final bidding, we shall bring in that idea of Nimikoto from the Iona civilization. Hmm. In your empty hearts that you seek to fill, from the blindness you were born into, find no fault in yourself, and be blessed with your own journey of your own ideas of self-expansion, for there is nothing else. Hmm. I bid you a good day, Adone. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. You're welcome. Well, um, yeah, thank you. I will do a little um, improvisation. We'll see what what comes out. Beautiful. When you started to speak, I felt um, a pressure here. Maybe that's someone wanting to speak. Let's see. Mm. I bless your hearts. My friends, thank you for uh, joining the get together. Thank you for joining this hangout. Thank you for being with us, being with me in this capacity. Blessed be your day, blessed be your nights, blessed be your mornings and evenings and every times. Much joy in your life and life of souls close to you. Ah, oh, much joy. The consciousness is everything. It penetrates the essence. It is the essence of everything. Rain falls. It's consciousness. The clear sky is consciousness. Everything is a flow of light. That flow be good, be joy, be sweet, be peace with you. Good day. Good day, baby.
Love you. Good day. Wonderful. Awesome. Hmm. All right. Good day, everyone. Thank Thanks you. again, Max. And there's another hangout going on over there with, uh, I don't know who started it. Be Be Sean and Be John. Yeah. yeah, Sean's in there about the astral thing. So, Are anyways, guys, love you guys. Love you. Uh, bye bye. 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 Love and butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> bye. See you soon. <laughs>